Welcome back to Building Trust with Built Environments. If you're looking for an action-packed video on building science and fire, we've got you covered with a big, big fire test here at the ICC NTA Lab in Bryan, Texas. So Jerry, you've been here at the NFPA 285 wall this week prepping for the big test. What is the purpose and value of this test? The 285 test is really a large scale assembly test. What we're simulating is a multi-story burn. If the fire were to break out in one floor, we don't want to see that fire go to the hop and go to the floor above. So what we simulate is if you were in a unit of a high rise building, for example, and a fire broke out on a couch or a kitchen and it got out of the window, does it climb that exterior cladding or veneer or rain screen to go to that room above? Because if you look at products, we have to allow time for people to evacuate that building. Okay, so I get it. We're starting to develop a theme here that it's not just about bringing a product and setting it on fire. There's a lot of designing and planning that goes into this process. What types of scenarios do you plan for? Are we planning for best case or worst case scenario? Really, we typically want to design and plan for the worst case scenario but you can't always do that in the real world or even in a facility like this. And that's where engineering judgments come in. They enable you to model those additional scenarios based on firm information that you do test in the real world, essentially safely extending those results to yield additional approved assemblies that rely on the same base information of what works and what does it. As a simple example, if your product can pass a structural fire test with studs at 24 inches on center, you'll typically also receive an approval for studs at 16 inches on center, and that's what we call an engineering judgment. It's reliably assumed in this case that the product will pass when it has more studs behind it. Oh, got it. So testing in the real world gets you the baseline results you need, and you can use engineering judgments to carry that forward and extend the results. So the product manufacturers out there interested in NFPA 285 fire testing, what's the process like for them? Hiring a consultant like us is certainly a recommended starting point, but we have the relationships, the experience, tools, and resources needed to put something like this together. We'll help our client make these design decisions to optimize the testing in ways that yield the most benefits for their products. That means they'll get the most approvals completed through the testing process, taking advantage of things like engineering judgments. And where there are weaknesses in the test results, we help our clients find ways to address them or acknowledge them in limitations for a product if that's the case. These decisions are some of the many reasons that hiring a consultant like us is so important. Product manufacturers just don't know a lot about this test process, and that's really why we're here. Oh, I see. You want an experienced team that has done this before to reliably execute the test and foresee any limitations that may arise. Thanks, Jarrett. Next up, we'll speak with a client representative about the NFPA 285 test. We're here with Bo Preston. Bo represents Omnis Panels. Bo, I know you are well familiar with the NFPA 285 materials, but I understand this is your first time seeing the test in person. So what has this experience been like for you? Well, it's really been eye-opening. Um, I thought I knew the test but it turns out there's a lot of pieces and parts and components and process that goes into it that I had never been a part of. So, you know, you see it on paper, you see the results, you see video at the burn, but now, you know, we get to experience it and learn the nuance of putting all the pieces and parts together for uh, hopefully achieving a, a positive outcome. Great. So given the complexities of putting testing protocol together and all the work it took to get to this week, what recommendations do you have for product manufacturers in need of this kind of testing? I just think a really open communication, lots of preparation, and just being prepared to be prepared. Honestly, there's just so many pieces and parts and components to, to get here. Utilizing built environments has helped us significantly because they just shepherd the situation. You know, they now do this. They just spoon feed you the opportunities that you need to to get it right. So it's really important to have have partners in something like this. And I, I just, for somebody who works every day, to, to do it alone is not something that I would ever consider doing. And lastly, how would your company use the results of this test, and what benefit does it offer you and your product? Oh, good question. Um, well, so this is the beginning of a long journey. We're achieving uh, an ICC rating in the United States. So 
Uh, NFPA 25 is a cornerstone test for that, and after this, built environments will help us achieve our, our wind and, and water ratings as well as uh, a few other tests. Just become more competitive in the nation and, and more well-known, and uh, so that's our ultimate goal. Awesome. Well, a lot coming down the pipeline then. Thanks, Bo, and good luck with the test. Well, thank you. And speaking of it, I think we are ready, so if you guys want to come with me, we'll go get started. For this test, our team and the ICC NTA facility team have constructed a 15 foot by 20 foot test wall using our clients' panels on steel studs and other assembly elements. In this test, we'll ignite a burner in the interior room for the first five minutes, followed by a window burner for the remaining 25 minutes, totaling 30 minutes of intense evaluation. Our team will closely monitor temperatures inside the room, wall cavities, and the cladding exterior using over 50 strategically placed temperature sensors. NFPA 285 gives us a lot of information. Sometimes the information that you get is a learning process, but it shows us what real life scenario actually works within our building's assemblies. The key thing about testing is you learn things, and we always learn elements within this test. This test gave us a lot of information, but it was a great example of showing you what an NFPA 285 test can do and how we keep our building safe for the market. Wow, what an exciting day here at the ICC NTA testing facility. We met the people that helped make these tests happen and witnessed the NFPA 285 test in action. Tomorrow, we'll be back on site to perform two other E119 tests with another product. So stay tuned and learn what it's all about or how your company can get involved. Until then, if you have any specific questions about fire testing or how you can test your products, email them in to our team at Built Environments and I'll make sure they get answered by one of our team of experts. And we'll see you at our next video on the E119 test.